Did you know that astronomers estimate there could be over 100 million interstellar objects passing through our solar system right now? But what if we found one that broke all the rules? On July 1st, 2025, astronomers didn't just flag a streak of light, they flagged an impossibility. It was traveling faster than any known comet on a path that no law of physics we have could explain. NASA's latest 3i, divided by Atlas Images, revealed something even more disturbing. Not a comet, but a cloud of sharp, mirror-bright shards reflecting light like fractured metal in the void. There was almost no dust, no gas, and no sign these fragments were shaped by nature at all. As emergency protocols snapped into place, experts realized the official story didn't fit the facts and the implications could rewrite everything we think we know about threats from beyond our solar system. So, what did NASA really find inside 3 I divided by Atlas? And how close are we to a scenario we cannot control? Automated survey software running quietly at the Atlas telescope in Rio Hurtado, Chile, flagged an anomaly just after midnight on July 1st, 2025. The alert came not from a human eye, but from image differencing algorithms code designed to catch anything that doesn't belong. In this case, the software picked up a single razor thin streak slicing through the star field at magnitude 18. The system cross checked its catalogs. Not a satellite, not an asteroid, not on any known list. Within seconds, the pipeline escalated the detection, pushing it to the Minor Planet Center's automated feed. Dr. Sophia Ibarra, the on-duty survey astronomer was first to see the flagged data. She recalls the moment as a blur. Her screen lit up with a candidate moving at a velocity that made no sense. The calculated motion, nearly 42 miles per second, placed it far outside the range for anything native to the solar system. Ibarra double-checked the timestamps and coordinates, then ran a forced photometry check to rule out cosmic rays or camera artifacts. The streak held up in every frame, Within an hour, the detection was confirmed by a second Atlas exposure and flagged for urgent follow-up. The system's confidence score, a statistical measure of how likely the object was to be a real moving body, climbed above 99%. Ibarra submitted the discovery report to the Minor Planet Center, noting the object's hyperbolic motion and unexplained speed. The official designation arrived before sunrise, a divided by 1-1 PL3Z soon to be known as 3i, divided by Atlas. That morning, observatories across the globe began sifting through their archives, searching for pre-discovery traces. Zwicky Transient Facility data from mid-June revealed faint hints of the same object always moving, always just outside the expected. The discovery had started with an algorithm's silent flag, but now the chase was on to understand what had arrived from the dark between stars. Orbit determination for 3i divided by Atlas began within hours of the first flagged streak. The Minor Planet Center's pipeline ingested every new position, each time stamped, each cross-checked against the background of Sagittarius. By the end of July 2nd, more than 40 astrometric points formed the backbone of a preliminary orbit. The numbers didn't budge. Eccentricity above 6, inclination nearly 175 degrees retrograde, slicing back over the ecliptic like a boomerang from deep space. JPL's horizon system and the MPC batch fit converged on a hyperbolic solution with uncertainty shrinking as pre-discovery images surfaced from Zwicky Transient Facility archives. Every added observation stretched the arc, reducing error bars until the unbound nature of the path was beyond dispute. Covariance matrices, statistical maps of orbital uncertainty, showed vanishingly slim odds of a closed solar system orbit. This is where the mystery deepens. An object just drifting through space shouldn't have this much energy. The incoming velocity, measured between 36 and 42 miles per second, ruled out all the usual suspects, like gravitational slingshots or planetary ejection. This wasn't just lost. This was fast. Simulations ran thousands of scenarios. Planet-planet scattering, cluster ejections, even supernova kicks. None matched the clean, unperturbed escape curve plotted by 3i divided by Atlas. The object's vector 
pointed back toward the Sagittarius arm, but tracing its birthplace meant navigating a fog of galactic drift and millions of years of stellar motion. Still, the probability of an interstellar origin calculated from orbital fits and dynamical models exceeded 98%. The data pipeline's precision left little room for doubt. This was no asteroid perturbed by Jupiter, no comet thrown by Neptune. The number's eccentricity, inclination, excess velocity locked 3i divided by Atlas into the exclusive club of interstellar visitors. Orbit math had spoken. Something alien to our solar system had arrived, and its path was written in the language of the stars. The Hubble Space Telescope locked onto 3i divided by Atlas on July 21st, 2025, capturing a series of images that upended every expectation. Instead of the familiar haze that signals a comet's icy coma, the frames revealed a tight cluster of fragments. Each one angular, each one sharp-edged, as if the object had shattered along geometric lines. The fragments glinted with a brightness that spiked and faded in milliseconds, mirror-like flashes slicing through the background stars. Photometry confirmed what the eye could barely believe. Dust and gas emissions, the usual fingerprint of cometary activity, registered at less than 1% of typical levels. Let's pause on that. A comet is dust and gas. That's its signature. It's a dirty snowball. Finding an object without that, but with fragments, means our fundamental definition of what this is, is wrong. It's not a comet. Dr. Mara Chowdhury, principal investigator for the Hubble campaign, was among the first to review the processed data. Her notes, later archived in the mission log, describe the scene as a field of broken blades, nothing like ice, nothing like rock. The shapes stood out against the void, some resembling splinters of metal, others like the shards of a fractured shell. No soft halos, no jets, no evidence of outgassing. Only the stark crystalline geometry and the hard metallic sheen. In the control room, the mood shifted from routine to unsettled. Veteran team members ran through the checklist. Instrument artifacts, cosmic ray hits, even the possibility of a camera malfunction. Each theory collapsed under repeated exposures and cross-filter checks. The photometric signature held up, a set of fragments reflecting sunlight with an efficiency closer to polished steel than to dusty ice. The absence of a coma raised immediate questions about the object's history. Was this a comet that never fully formed? Or one that had been stripped bare by some violent event in deep space? The geometry of the breakup, so precise and so uniform, defied the random splintering seen in tidal disruptions or volatile driven explosions. Chowdhury's team flagged the anomaly for urgent review, their findings passing up the chain to mission managers within minutes. The images, and the questions they raised would soon trigger a response that reached far beyond the boundaries of routine science. August 6th, 2025, at 0312 UTC. NASA's anomaly desk lights up with a flagged entry. Geometry Unnatural Fragmentation Event. Dr. Hannah McDougall, a planetary scientist with a reputation for precision, is first to review the log. The images from Hubble aren't just odd, they're unsettling. Shards aligned in a pattern no known comet or asteroid could make, each reflecting sunlight in sharp, metallic bursts. The standard protocols call for a measured response. But McDougall doesn't wait. She triggers an emergency override, routing the alert to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Minor Planet Center, and Flight Director Dr. Elena Atwood at Goddard. Atwood, known for her calm under pressure, takes the call with a single clipped question. Confirm anomaly. What's the risk? McDougall's answer is on record. No natural process matches the geometry. Request immediate retarget. The chain of command dissolves. Within 14 minutes, Atwood authorizes a full override. Hubble's current schedule is wiped and the James Webb Space Telescope is ordered to swing toward 3i divided by Atlas. This cannot be overstated. Getting time on Hubble or Webb is a process that takes scientists months or years. To wipe the schedule in 14 minutes means they believe this was, perhaps, 
the single most important astronomical event happening, or perhaps a threat. The comm logs capture the scramble, engineers rerouting observation queues, international partners pinged for coordination, telescope operators recalculating exposure windows on the fly. The override is rare, reserved for threats, not curiosities, but the geometry leaves little room for doubt. By 0326 UTC, JWST's new coordinates are locked. Observatories in Chile, South Africa and Australia receive the global alert, snapping up whatever data they can before sunrise. The Minor Planet Center's feed, usually a trickle, turns into a torrent as new astrometric points pour in. Internal NASA chat threads read like a crisis drill, except this isn't a drill. The phrase potential non-natural origin appears in more than one message. McDougall later describes those minutes as a blur. You're not thinking about career or protocol. You're thinking, if this is real, we need every eye on it. Now, for the first time since the discovery, the object is treated not as a distant curiosity, but as a possible planetary risk. Every telescope that can be spared is aimed at the fragments. Data begins to flow, but the questions only multiply. In less than a quarter of an hour, the world's observing network pivots from routine science to all hands vigilance, driven by a single line in a logbook and the conviction that for once waiting could cost more than acting. Spectrographs at Cerro Paranal and Mauna Kea began collecting photons within hours of the NASA override. What came back from the first reduction runs left even seasoned planetary chemists at a loss. The spectrum of three I divided by Atlas instead of the familiar cocktail of water vapor, organics, and dust, showed a strikingly red featureless continuum, more akin to D-type asteroids than any comet on record. Near-infrared data from IRTF SPECS instrument picked out the broad signature of water ice, but in much lower abundance than expected for a body this active. Attempts to tease out gas phase emissions found no trace of the classic cyanogen or diatomic carbon bands that usually paint a comet's coma green. Dr. Priya Nand, a specialist in cometary chemistry, recalls the first team call. We kept rechecking the calibration. No CN, no C2, no OI, just a flat red slope and a hint of crystalline ice. The lack of cyanogen, CN, and diatomic carbon, C2, isn't just a minor detail. It's the entire basis for cometary chemistry. It's like finding a creature in the deep sea that doesn't use water. It forces us to ask if the rules of chemistry are different where this thing was born, or if it's not a thing at all, but a construct. More puzzling still, laboratory analogues that best matched the reflectance profile pointed to a mix of Tagish Lake meteorite dust and large-grained water ice, but with a spectral slope that steepened as the days passed. Infrared emissivity maps revealed something stranger. Distinct patches flickered between mirror bright reflectivity and deep, almost pitch black absorption. The dust density, measured by photometric scatter, was less than 1% of what models predict for a comet this size. Every data set pointed in the same direction. Three, I divided by Atlas, had shed its familiar cometary mask exposing a molecular makeup and surface behavior that defied every precedent. For the planetary science community, the chemistry was not just a puzzle. It was a warning that the rules for interstellar visitors might be written in an entirely different script. Three interstellar objects, Oumuamua, Borisov, and now three I divided by Atlas have crossed our solar system in less than a decade each rewriting the script for what an alien visitor can be. Oumuamua, first spotted in October 2017, looked nothing like a comet or asteroid. Its elongated shape, lack of dust and faint, tumbling light curve left astronomers guessing. Some called it a fragment of another world. Others floated more exotic ideas, but the data stayed just ambiguous enough to keep every theory alive. 